Hi everybody, Rick McAvoy here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where this week on my blog I have written a post titled How I Got the Shot of Bordeaux Cathedral Architectural Photography in France Snappy I Know Now recently I've been writing and talking a lot about architectural photography. You might notice that in my photography blog posts there aren't many photos. Now there is a reason for this um, and this post is the first of those reasons. I wanted to talk about some of my photos in quite a lot of detail. That's why this week I've got the interior shot of Bordeaux Cathedral which is one of my favourite architectural photos. Is it a travel photo? Well, it was taken when I was travelling, but it's an architectural photo. Let's not get into that pedantry. So, um, yes, in this post, I have talked about how I got the shot. So, um, we're talking here about, well, shall we go through it? Shall we do that? You don't mind if I just check the blog post, my promise to you. It's on my wonderful little iPad. So, where is Bordeaux? Bordeaux is in France. It's on the west coast, some way down. Do you want to know where the cathedral is? Well, check out the blog post. It's um, it's on a map. A map, actually, which is from Lightroom. I use the map module in Lightroom. Much maligned, I have to say, by some people, but I think, quite frankly, it's ace, because I can go back to a photo taken in 2015, and I know exactly where it was taken. Okay, so Bordeaux in France, in Europe, Northern Hemisphere. Right then, how old's the cathedral? This is what I love about my travels and going to places like this, because if I didn't have photography, I probably wouldn't have gone in this cathedral. I'd have probably gone straight to the bar. So, 12th to 14th century. It's um, It's old. Um, in the blog post, I've put a link to the um, Bordeaux Tourism website, which is a really good source of info. What was I doing in Bordeaux? Well, we've been on our summer holidays and we were travelling back from the south coast of France, where we had a few nights stopping in a quirky hotel in Bordeaux, who, whose name I won't mention because we had a few issues with them. Um, I think he was glad to see us leave as English peasants. Um, so yeah, we had a few problems and um, that's just reminded me. Driving from Bordeaux out of the city onto the motorway, I had this memory, this, this nagging doubt that I'd forgotten something and I'd left one suitcase at the top of the stairs. So I had to turn around and drive half an hour back into Bordeaux and to the hotel where the man was stood there waiting. I had to get the bag and we legged it basically. Okay, but Bordeaux Cathedral was lovely. Mrs M sat in the sunshine, me in the cold of the cathedral. So um, what do I want to talk about? The time of day of the photo, 14.27pm. That's when I took it. So it would have been after lunch, so I probably had one or two beers, maybe nothing too much. Um, now, you have to go to the blog post for the photo. Well, it will be on the thumbnail, but go to the blog post and there's a decent-sized image there. It looks like the church is empty. Sorry, did I say church? Cathedral, a place of worship. It looks like it was empty. Well, on the day I was there, in the middle of August, it was absolutely heaving. It actually wasn't cold. It was quite hot in there. It was cooler than outside, obviously, being such a massive stone structure. But it was absolutely rammed. So, um... How did I get a photo that made it look like it was empty? Well, I've got this magic trick. Um, this is a secret. Don't tell anybody. This is between us. So what you do, you put your camera to your eye, and then you... Wait for it. You tilt your camera like that until there aren't any people underneath. You could also spend 74 hours in Photoshop doing the same thing, but um, I captured what I wanted to capture, which was... Um, which was the object and what did I want to capture what was I after I'm gonna read this I wrote this it's quite good I wanted to capture and convey the magnificence of this wonderful magnificent Romanesque slash gothic landmark 
I feel that I have a responsibility to convey the grandness to those not as fortunate as me to visit and photograph it or any other building come to that. So that's what I want to do with my architectural photography. I want you to see what the building, just to replicate it so you can get a feel for it. Obviously it's not the same as being there, but it's the best I can do to be fair. What gear did I use? Um, boring gear alert. If you've uh, read any of my blog posts or watched any of my YouTube videos, do you like the matching? This is colour coordinated. This is as though I planned it. T-shirt, hoodie, combo. Uh, yeah, if you've seen anything else I've written, you will be surprised not that I use my Canon 6D and my Canon 17 to 40 millimeter f/4L lens. Handheld, ISO 1000, f8, shutter speed 1 80th of a second. It was quite dark in there. Obviously, I was trying to get the detail in the shadows, so I actually underexposed by two stops. Now, this was taken in 2015. My Lightroom processing has improved massively since then, so it might have been part of a set of three bracketed images, but I've deleted the other one, so I've only got the one left. So, two stops underexposed to get some of that detail in the shadows. I've still got the detail in the stained glass windows. There's a lot to capture in one photo and I'm delighted with the image. So the ISO 1000, that's faster than I would choose to use. I'd go with 100 whenever I can do, but for that I need a tripod. And if I'm going to use a tripod, I need there to be no people. And it was rammed, absolutely rammed. So what I did was... I focus using back button, back button focus where I press the AF on button. So I hold my camera like that, or like that. Press the back button focus button, I focus. Then I lift my camera up a bit, I tilted it. I'm looking at the little screen on the Canon 6D. It's not a great screen, but 2015, six years ago, my eyes were a lot better. Struggling now. I press the self timer button and because I was hand holding, I was at 1 80th of a second, so I should be okay. But I braced myself and I had two seconds to get as tight as I could do when there was nobody around me. Two seconds later, the shutter fired. That was it, photo taken. So that's how I got the shot. Okay? Um, it's much easier explaining these things to the camera than it is writing them down. Um, what else do I need to tell you about this? I use AV mode all the time. I used AV mode for this. I select the aperture, the ISO. I knew by a test exposure what the shutter speed was going to be now above one well one sixty of a second you should be okay for handheld photography so one eighty that was okay and i was braced and the shot is as sharp as i'd like so i'm happy with it um yeah if i'd gone with an iso of 100 i'd have been down in the one fifteenth, one twentieth of a second that would have been a blurry photo don't forget, a noisy photo is better than a blurry fo photo. <laughs> Nearly said it. Okay, anything else I want to tell you? I've told you the magic. Tilt the camera up. It's not magic, is it? So I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for staying with me so far. I'm delighted that I've got a load of new subscribers. It's really good. Now that I'm just talking about the architectural photography stuff, I seem to be... Um, Finding my little niche, or is it niche? Right, I'm done for now. Much calmer today, which is good, talking at a reasonable speed. Uh, right, I'm waffling now. I always aim to be less than 10 minutes. I'm nearly there, so I will say thank you very much for watching my video and sharing some time with me. Please check out my website, rickmacavoyphotography.com. Please check out my Splendid Photography Explained podcast available on all good podcast providers. And when I've worked out how to do it, there will be links scrolling along the bottom here. But I don't know how to do it yet because I'm not very good at that kind of thing. Okay, so what am I talking about next? Well, having spoken about how I got the photo, it makes sense to talk about the processing of the photo. Yes, this is the actual numbers I use in Lightroom. That's why I don't put photos in my blog posts about architectural photography because the numbers are different. So I thought I'm going to go specific on the photo itself, tell you how I edited it 
and how I took the lights out. Thanks for watching. I've been Rick McAvoy. See you on the next one.